welcome back to my channel so to, uh, today we have come up with a new topic on alcohol poisoning so let me give you some details about alcohol poisoning because this is also an issue which is happening and people are consuming a lot of alcohol not knowing the side effects of it so let me give you more details about this particular issue today so first of all what is alcohol poisoning so this is a serious condition basically where this happens because you drink too much of alcohol within a short period of time so if your alcohol consumption within a short period of time is increasing that can lead to a complication called as alcohol poisoning so this can lead to a lot of side effects like you may have uh, uh, breathing issues heart rate might go very high your body temperature may go down you may have something called as gag reflux what is this gag reflux i'll tell you later so these complications can happen and you can have impairment in mot uh, your motor coordinations you may not be able to uh, walk properly you may not be able to take your decisions properly so there are a lot of uh, issues that can happen because of alcohol overdose and just to give you a few statistics approximately 2200 people die every year because of alcohol poisoning so this is a serious condition which is uh, affecting most of the people who are abusing alcohol because of some or the other reason so this can be happening because of accidental reasons also because we know some of the household products that we have at home also contain some percentage of alcohol so intentionally if you're trying to take it or accidentally if you're taking it by some means then that also can lead to alcohol poisoning so we need to understand that not only alcohol when you drink as beer or whiskey or something you are consuming alcohol even your household products can have alcohol content and accidentally or incidentally having this also can lead to alcohol poisoning so as I told you, alcohol poisoning is all about how much alcohol content is there in your blood. So in the blood, if the content of this alcohol is very high, that can lead to alcohol overdose. So this is called as blood alcohol content and the variation in this percentage. So this table gives you the detail of that. So you can see as the percentage of this alcohol is increasing, the impact of that is going to be severe. So as you can see, when it is 0.05, it is mild as the percentage increases from 0 0.05 to 0 0.45 you can see the effects are life threatening right so that is why the percentage of this alcohol or the alcohol content in the blood should be minimum and as this increases the effect of this is going to be detrimental so initially there can be difficulty in speaking as the percentage of this alcohol increases you can see there can be vomiting also and at last stage it can even lead to death so coming to binge drinking, so what is exactly this drinking? So basically there is a standard drink, like how much you're supposed to take, right? So everything has a limit. So here also when you take beer, there is a limit. We know that the percentage of alcohol in each drink become is different. So when you talk about beer and its variety, there can be 5% of alcohol. When you talk about wine, there is 12% of alcohol. And when you talk about uh, other drinks like uh, whiskey, vodka and other things, there are higher percentage of alcohol like 40 percent so one o's okay so one o's is basically 29.5 ml so you can see the standard drinks how much you can take now right so multiply by the uh, uh, 29.5 you will get to know the how much ml is the standard drink so basically here if you're trying to drink more than five drinks within a period of two hours okay within two hours if you're taking more than five drinks for males then that can be called as binge drinking and in case of females if they're taking more than four drinks within two hours and that can lead to complications so you need to see to it that you have a limit for everything and if you try to increase the limit then you can have complications so coming to the types of alcohol it can be ethyl alcohol isopropyl alcohol it can be methanol so different types of alcohol present in different sources so let me give you some details about the sources also so you, so that you're aware what all contents can have alcohol so mouthwashes your uh, medications certain household products detergents that you're using disinfectants basically they will have a lot of ethyl alcohol similarly lotions and some cleaning products can have isopropyl alcohol and if you're using paints solvents even they can have methanol so in this way different products that you're trying to use uh, uh, at home also can be a source of alcohol so accidentally if uh, children drink this by some means then this is going to be very very detrimental so see to it that you keep this away from children so that they don't consume this alcohol and lead to alcohol poisoning so coming to the symptoms of alcohol poisoning it can lead to confusion vomiting seizures it can lead to slow breathing okay where 
your breathing rates will reduce you can have irregular breathing so there can be variations so some people it can be slow breathing some people it can lead to irregular breathing and it can uh, uh, something can happen like your skin starts becoming pale your body temperature becomes low that is called as hypothermia and it can even lead to unconsciousness so these are the few symptoms that can happen because of alcohol poisoning so coming to the uh, uh, pathophysiology what exactly happens here so once you drink alcohol it gets absorbed in your gi tract okay so in your gi tract this alcohol gets absorbed and in the body this alcohol is break, broken down into acetaldehyde okay so we have alcohol dehydrogenase in our body so this alcohol dehydrogenase breaks down alcohol into acetaldehyde okay and this leads to hangover so this leads to acute toxicity to our central nervous system so this leads to increased inhibition to the cns system and decreased excitability so they feel calm okay so that's the reason they drink okay so once this cnm central nervous system inhibition happens the the person stays calm okay and this will lead to inhibition of the neurotransmitter so basically gaba okay gaba so this is the neurotransmitter inhibitory neurotransmitter which leads to uh, it usually binds to the receptor of the uh, cell in the brain and that leads to decreased uh excitability so what happens is this alcohol also okay a is alcohol so that also competes with this gaba so whatever activity gaba was doing the same activity can be done by this alcohol so this also binds to the receptor and that also leads to the uh, inhibition of this particular neurotransmitter so that is why it leads to calm effect so that is the reason why uh, there can be decreased coordination why they can be cognitive dysfunctioning and what can lead to sedation so since this happens this is the usual pathophysiology that happens because of alcohol poisoning so all happens because you are drinking this right so that is why it leads to this uh, decreased cellular excitability so over a period of time if you or keep consuming alcohol then your tolerance limit also increases you might have noticed this right initially you were taking one glass but now even if you take two glass you are not getting that uh, sedation so that means you have your tolerance limit is increasing because more and more of alcohol is binding to this receptor because of which uh, it leads to more sedation is is required over a period of time so coming to the risk factors uh, it can vary with the people your overall health might be a factor uh whether you are eating when you are taking drink that is this very important because it is seen that if you do not eat anything and you are only drinking the absorption rate in your body is much much faster and that can lead to more serious impact okay so that is why they tell that you have to eat little uh, when you are having drinks okay so here also uh, it might vary with size and weight and it is very uh, important that you don't combine your alcohol with drugs okay so when you are taking certain uh, prescription drugs okay so doctor will suggest you that in case you are taking this drug please don't consume alcohol so there you need to be very very careful because it can have uh, cross reactions and which can lead to detrimental impact to people so that is why when you are taking certain prescribed drugs see to it that you do not consume alcohol or consult your doctor ask whether it is uh, uh, not to be taken and then please do it as the doctor suggests so in this way it can have a lot of detrimental impacts and this might be the risk factors so basically you need to check on that so coming to the uh, complications basically though i already spoke about body temperature falling down so that can sometimes lead, uh, lead to cardiac arrest also so so this might be a reason in people who are uh, abusing alcohol the body temperature goes down and they might uh, uh, go to cardiac arrest condition and apart from that it can lead to brain damage because of uh, inhibition it can lead to other problems like uh, low blood pressure it can increase your sugar levels because uh, it can lead to seizures because of that so lot of complications can happen one major complication that can happen is your choking so what exactly is choking is uh, Im imagine you had a uh, this uh, alcohol uh, overdose and you have you have been uh, fallen down so what happens is uh, in in case there is a vomit okay so as you have fallen down the vomit can uh, choke your entire system there and that can lead to the gag reflex okay so this impairment that can happen because of choking of the vomit can lead to asphyxiation or it, you may not be able to breathe properly because of which it can lead to death so this is a major complication that can happen so basically if you see someone fallen like that it's better to call 911 
and you, if you think that uh, he will uh, be okay after some time in case he has a vomit and it chokes his uh, system then definitely because of lack of oxygen and asphy asphyxiation basically it can lead to death of the person also so we need to be very careful about uh, this situation so coming to prevention options you definitely uh, drinking in moderation is uh, recommended and uh, definitely you should not drink in empty stomach as i told you some amount of food has to be taken along with the drink so that the absorption rate becomes slightly slow otherwise within a short uh, period of time if you are continuously drinking it can lead to this complication and definitely if it is present in uh, uh, household products see to it that you keep it safely so that the children do not accidentally touch it and drink it okay so this can be a serious thing so we need to take care about it so coming to the diagnostic options there are different diagnostic options one is blood test so basically you are checking your blood and seeing the alcohol content in the blood so this has to be done within 6 to 12 hours of the last drink so once you do this test you get to know how much percentage of alcohol is there in the blood and based on that it can be analyzed and one more thing is breath analyzers you might have seen this uh, uh, police they use this breath analyzers to check if the people are uh, having alcohol and roaming at the nights so this kind of breath analyzers basically will check the alcohol content in your lungs so basically when you drink alcohol it moves into the entire blood system and it reaches to different organs also so lungs is one organ where it reaches and in the lungs what happens is this alcohol will evaporate and as it evaporates when once you take uh, take a breath once you breathe in this particular equipment even the alcohol content will reach the breath analyzer so basically it's working on the principle of redox reaction where the alcohol content which is there in your breath gets oxidized to acetic acid because there are electrodes inside anode and cathode and uh, oxygen is reduced in the cathode inside and uh, this alcohol which is there it oxidizes into acetic acid and because of this redox reaction which is happening a current will be produced so we know the basic that when there is any redox reaction there, there is a current which can be produced so this current which is produced is measured so what happens in case you have taken more alcohol definitely there would be more alcohol in your breath and once there is more alcohol in the breath there would be more redox reaction happening and once there is more redox reaction there is more current which can be measured so higher the value of current higher the amount of alcohol you have consumed so that is how the police gets to know that this person has drunk or this person has not drunk so this is the basic reaction so uh, it can be analyzed even with potassium dichromate so ethanol as i told you it gets oxidized to acetic acid and if you are using potassium dichromate as a solution it gets reduced to potassium 3 sulfate and the color of this is green so this is a small experiment what you can try so you take potassium dichromate in a beaker and you breathe in that particular breather uh, in the once the person has drunk if he breathes in this particular beaker the breath would contain ethanol that ethanol would react with potassium dichromate and there would be a same redox reaction that is happening here and this potassium dichromate would get reduced to chromium 3 sulfate and the color of this chromium 3 sulfate is green so that is why if the color changes they get to know that the person is having this particular uh, uh, i mean the person has drunk and that is why the redox reaction has happened and that led, that has led to color change so this is a small experiment also which can be used but basically breath analyzers are widely used where the direct current measurement can give you the analysis so coming to the treatment options careful monitoring is very very important certain times they even give oxygen therapy certain times they may give certain fluids intravenously because because of vomiting there might be a weakness and that can lead to dehydration so to prevent that fluids might be given and to increase the strength you might they might suggest you to have vitamins and glucose and in uh, in case uh, accidentally you have consumed methanol then certain times they may suggest hemodialysis so this is a system which uh, filters your waste in the body so whatever uh, your kidney does the same will be done by a hemodialysis machine and that will be filtered out from your body so all the toxins will be filtered out so that the effect of this alcohol poisoning can be reduced so coming to the take away messages we have seen how uh, alcohol poisoning can occur so how drinking in the empty stomach within a short period of time can lead to complications and how not only actual alcohol that you drink as beer wine or uh, whiskey even the alcohol present in your household products also can lead to alcohol poisoning 
So there are a lot of things that you can take into consideration and please do not mix your alcohol with prescription medicine. So this is very much important that you keep a gap between those medicines and alcohol. First of all, it's better not to take it during this period of time. So please take care of yourself and uh, see to it that you avoid this alcohol abuse. So thank you for watching. Do like my videos. Do subscribe to my channel Geeks and Geeks. And please share this video with maximum people so that uh, I can make much more educational videos for you like this. Thank you for your support till date. Have a nice day.